riding gear and personal protection. Up until recently, I've always worn a full body armor, full upper body armor, Alpine Star uh, webbing type setup, which was great. Had a few issues with the Alpine Star uh, elastic side of things, but I've since moved to only protecting my elbows and forearms, which is, I've got a lot of scars and damage on my arms from falling over on rocks and bracing myself with my arms. So at present, um, the only real sort of protection I'm wearing, are, I've got my Garne SG12 boots, I've got uh, Lee at knee braces, I just wear cheap enduro pants. Um, they don't last very long for me, so <laughs> I get whatever's in the bargain bin. And as far as upper body, I just wear, I'm wearing some Fox elbow and forearm guards at the moment. As far as the quality of those go, that's still up in the air at the moment. The fitment isn't great, but the protection is there. <laughs> um, but you know, elbow guards seem to be a bit, bit of a hit and miss thing for, for most people. Well, I'd, I'd have to step in there and say we're definitely not sponsored by Fox. I, I think Fox makes some of the worst shit on the planet and I will say that very loudly and clearly in many videos. Sorry, mate. Yeah, I think because everybody's body shapes are different, like Jeff tried my elbow guards on the other day and they were a complete mismatch for his arm shape. Yeah, the, the Fox ones are not a perfect fit for me either, but uh, something's better than nothing. And what about, you mentioned before the A-Stars pressure suit, do you find you overheating those things? Yeah, look, there was an incident at one of the races in, in the last couple of years where a rider um, overheated and um, had, had to be taken out by uh, paramedics and I, I'm a hot, um, I get very hot when I ride, I sweat a lot and that sort of put the wind up me a little bit. So after that I decided to you know, ditch the full body armour. Most of the injuries that I've had, had riding have been, like I said before, elbows, forearms, hands, and I've had a couple of broken ribs, but they don't make body armor to protect you from broken ribs. Um, so it's not like a motocross circuit where you're getting roosted by rocks and things like that. We're not desert racing. We're not doing high speed things. It's all low impact type, type yeah. stuff. Look, it, again, it's one of those things where people will say, oh, what's the best protective gear setup? But I, I, I think there are so many factors involved. And I think as you're saying, once you get into hard enduro, ventilation becomes so critical. You've, you're just not moving very fast and you're generating so much body heat and it can be a seriously deadly risk if you get into heat exhaustion then heat stroke. As we know from Tim Coleman, yeah. I think most people around the world know he was in a induced coma for several weeks in hospital and was, was very lucky to survive a case of serious heat stroke. Mm, yeah, I had a... Um a touch of it about three or four years ago, right in uh, Glassy area in southeast Queensland in summer. Thankfully, one of the riding guys there recognised the symptoms. I just didn't feel particularly well. The next thing you know, I'm lying down. I'm not feeling great at all. He recognised the symptoms as being heat stroke, and uh, it was honestly a terrifying experience. And that was only a mild case. I did not feel right for about two weeks afterwards. So it's very, very serious. Since then, I've, I have actually ditched a few things like the pressure suits because just for me, that when I get overheated, I start to perspire, I, I overheat, I get fatigued really quickly. And when, when I get fatigued, I make mistakes. I grab too much, too much front brake or whatever. And, and those mistakes, man, you uh, end up uh, with the rubber side up. I err on, err on the side of caution and, and run less these days, which sounds counterintuitive, but I, you know, it works for me. And certainly one thing I'd add to that is we had a local guy die, a uh, very fit guy in his 30s, but he told his friends, oh, look, I'm just feeling I need a break. You go ahead. They did. And when they came back, uh, multiple organ failure, heat stroke, he died. That really put the wind up us. And it got us thinking about so many things. You know, how, how ventilated do we want our gear to be? Which protective gear do we really need? How do we stay cool? And above all, <laughs> don't okay. leave your buddies behind. If they're looking a little bit out of sorts, just stay with them. Because it's, it's not fun to come back 10 minutes later and find they've died. Yeah, and there are little things just while we're on that subject there like for example you know if, if it is a hot day and that person is suffering from heat stroke 
you know, wet some rags, wet their jersey, get their gear off, you know, wet the jersey, lay it across their chest. There's, there's lots of things you can do to bring their, their body temperature down, back down quite quickly. Uh, pretty basic stuff, but um, especially if you've done some first aid training. Yeah, look, essentially get them naked, tie them to a tree. Mm. Um, you can have a lot of fun with this, actually. Yeah. Get through their wallet, you know, get all the good <laughs> things out of there, credit cards, cash. I've been using James Cox's license now for uh, my identification for quite some time. And he's, he's unsuspecting. <laughs> I yeah, kind of feel we've got a little bit off the topic here about riding silver class hard in Jura. <laughs> 